Hey there weavers, this is Grace with Tangled Webs Weaving and I have the rug on my loom finally and started weaving some yesterday and I thought that I would share it with you. So as a reminder, this is a taquette uh, weave structure. Taquette is a similar to a summer winter pattern, but it is uh, a weft faced weave and it does not have a tabby. Summer and winter is a tied unit weave. Tied meaning that there is a warp in whose job is to tie down the pattern floats. And the unit is there are groups of threads that either create the pattern or the background. So with the taquette, since there's no uh, tabby, which is typically the background. The pattern is reversible, so whatever uh, is on the top, there is possibly a different color on the bottom. In this example here that I have, we're using two shuttles, and that is how we can get the um, colors that come across partway and then change without doing something like a tapestry weave. So um, right now I am weaving uh, a solid blue line and it is blue on both the top and the bottom. And so I am using two shuttles that both have the blue in it. Back here where I have the green and the oatmeal color, uh, I used a shuttle that has green in it and a shuttle that has the oatmeal. And I alternated those shuttles and depending on which treadle I pushed, either the green would have come up on the middle and the oatmeal would come up on the side or in this case the green comes up on the sides and the oatmeal is in the middle. Now this is on the face of the rug. On the back of the rug it's just the opposite. The oatmeal is showing uh, on the face over here and the green is showing on the face over here. So I am almost to the end of the blue, which is a, just a one inch uh, line across the rug. And then we will switch to our um, two shuttles with two different colors. And I thought you would like to see that process. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, set up the camera so that you can see the weaving a little bit better. And then we'll get started. So here we have the rug and you can see a little bit better uh, the color changes and um, maybe when I finish with this video I'll take the camera and have a peek under the bottom and you can see the color changes are reversed under there. Uh, so two or one thing that is critical when weaving uh, especially wool rugs but pretty much any rugs is uh, to use a temple and I've tried doing it without a temple because I don't really like using temples personally and it just they don't come out very well the selvages are terrible uh, so we've got the temple uh, inserted and I'm using two shuttles even though I have the same color uh, because it will give a consistent edge. So we're going to start off weaving with um, treadle one. And you can see, um, I think you can see, oh, it might be hard to see with, with the, uh, the lighting and everything, but with this treadle raised, there are um, three raised and one down, three raised, one down 
in this section that corresponds with this section of color. And then it's reversed over this section. And that's what creates uh, the ability to have it be a summer winter pattern. So I've started each of the shuttles from opposite sides and that will just allow me to kind of keep track of which is which and which treadle I should be on. And this, oh, it's because it's upside down. I keep getting it turned around backwards and it's because it's upside down. this. Looks like it's about an inch. Um, looks like I have maybe one more repeat to go. I'm going to go one more repeat. So now the pattern calls for me to switch to weaving um, blue and green. No, that's not correct. So the next, uh, the next repeat is the Sandy Heather and the uh, green with a kiwi. So this is kiwi. This is Sandy Heather. Um, so I'm going to continue that for another uh, two and five eighths inches. So I need to um, cut these and secure the tails. And to do that, I need to uh, back up one, oops, wrong one pick. because I need to uh, cut this and secure that tail and then place this pick and cut and secure that tail. So my scissors. Okay. 
So with this, you don't really need to do anything special with the tails. They just tend to bury themselves because it's such a dense weave. Um, it completely covers the warp and um, that doubled thread, even though it's a fairly large thread, uh, it will just disappear. So now I will change out my bobbins. Normally I would not use an end feed shuttle for a yarn this hefty. It's a worsted white yarn, but um, I don't have that many shuttles that have large capacity bobbins. So. It's working fine. The only problem that I do uh, see is this particular yarn, which is um, a lamb, the Lamb's Pride worsted weight yarn. It, um, it's a singles, and as the and it comes in in uh oh, come in tanks. It comes in skeins like this. Uh end pull skeins, which are great. I love these. But when you pull this out, it it uh in introduces twist because of the way that it's being pulled out. Then when I wound it on the Pern, I wind my perns so that they introduce a little bit of twist when it's coming off the pern. Uh, it's just the nature of the end feed shuttles. Uh, you can go and look at the video that I did. Uh, it was a live feed that I did last or a live stream that I did last uh, Friday and it's posted on my channel and I'll put a link to it up here. But the the end feed shuttle, if you wind it one way, it introduces twist. If you wind it the other way, uh, when the yarn comes off, it takes twist out. I really didn't want to take twist out. Um, so I wound it like I normally do, and it tends to get a little pigtaily towards the end of the pern when I'm, when I'm weaving. So, that, that's an, a problem. It's not a huge problem. Um, I haven't seen any, any issues when I just have to make sure that there's not a pigtail sticking out somewhere um, that I don't see and have to try and fix later, later on. So enough about that. We'll go ahead and um, change out the bobbins and start on the next colors. All right, so here is the oatmeal and for you new weavers um, a little trick is to always be sure on your boat shuttles when you load the bobbin to have the thread coming off from the bottom before you thread it through the slot um, that will make it unroll a lot easier so we'll go ahead and start here And there's no need with this particular uh, 
um, Wii structure to uh, try and tuck those tails, like I said before. They bury themselves quite well. So here you can see the magic starting to happen uh, where the green seems to stop and the uh, sandy heather starts in.
last pass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, short six inch tail and I'm just going to put it through by hand. As a general rule, I will keep my beater bar pushed up against the fell line and I will keep my foot on the pedal that, or the treadle, that I am uh, working with until I can change my bobbins because you would not believe how many times I have let, the, let my treadle down, I, or my treadle up, I should say, uh, and then replaced my bobbin, and then out of just force of habit, I have treadled the next treadle. So I just tend to play it safe, and keep my foot down on that treadle, even though it's getting kind of sore. <laughs> Get that down in there. There we go. All right. So now, go ahead and overlap these. Just not too far. Overlap these a fair amount. Continue to weave. You'll never be able to see that in there. This is not fast weaving. The ends per inch on this pattern are six. So I have six warp threads per inch. The pattern picks are 42. So I have to do 42 passes for each inch, which is a lot.
I promised you a shot of the underside of the weaving. So here we are. This is the top. Let's see if we can come down here and get a good shot of the bottom. There we are. So you can see how it's reversed on either side. I hope you like the video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel to receive notification when I release future videos. Thanks and happy weaving!